Hi and a very warm welcome to our daily current affairs videos. I hope you all are studying well. You all are happy and fine. अब तक आप सबको हमारे RBI crash course के बारे में पता ही चल चुका होगा. Uh, so keep solving tests. Join our crash course in case you think that you need a booster dose to your preparation. We will provide you with a personalized guidance for sure short collect, uh, selection in phase one. All right, and also make sure that you download uh, Telegram or subscribe to our Telegram channel, right? And download download our app Anujindal dot in. You will find this app in Play Store. Download it for a quick access for exam updates, video sessions, monthly GK, and all the things that you need for your preparation. All right, use your smartphone smartly. Download this app. Utilize this app. It will help you a lot in your preparation. All right, you don't have to uh, then wander around around searching for materials. You will get everything at one place. All right. So let's just start quickly. Start with today's session, today's daily current affairs session. We have another set of amazing ten questions that will help you boost your preparation. All right. These questions are based on the current trends asked in general awareness and previous year questions of the RBI exam. So. Please follow the session very, very carefully if you are preparing for it. It will not only help you revise; it will help you retain better. Okay, so the first question: Which of the following publishing house has published Indian agricultural agriculture towards twenty thirty? Okay, pathways for enhancing farmers' income, nutritional security, and sustainable food and farm systems book. Okay, so one. पब्लिकेशन आया है जिसका ये टाइटल है एंड द क्वेश्चन इज आस्किंग यू विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग पब्लिशिंग हाउसेज हैज पब्लिश दिस डॉक्यूमेंट और राइट सो प्लीज आंसर द क्वेश्चन क्विकली सो दैट वी कैन लुक इन टू इट इन द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड वॉट दिस एग्जैक्टली इज अबाउट ओके सो द फर्स्ट ऑप्शन यू हैव रोली बुक्स पेंगु इन रैंडम हाउस इंडिया रूपा पब्लिकेशन एलिफ बुक और स्प्रिंगर ओके सो द करेक्ट आंसर हेयर इज स्प्रिंगर Now let's see. Union Minister of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, Sri Narendra Singh Tomar, has released a book titled "Indian Agriculture Towards 2030." Okay, so Sri Narendra Singh Tomar ne ye book ko release ki hai, and uh, the book is titled "Indian Agriculture Towards 2030: Pathways for Enhancing Farmers' Income, Nutritional Security, and All These Things." Okay, the book is published by Springer Publishing House. Okay, and it captures the progress and efforts of Niti Aayog, Minister of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare, all right, and Food and Agricultural Organization towards improvement in agriculture sector. Okay, so let's uh, see. Let's have a short insight about what basically. Let's just break down this title. Okay, let's just break down enhancing farmers' income. Right, so 2017 में there was a committee known as Dalwai Committee, right? And even before that, uh, many committees have been constituted by the government. There have been many research studies, uh, you know, that publish recommendations as to how to double or enhance farmers' income. Right, uh, there are various ways to enhance farmers' income, be it through better soil health. right through better agriculture insurance through crop diversification through diversification in agriculture also why only should the farmer sustain on uh, you know growing of crops and cultivation the farmer should also expand in animal husbandry and fisheries all right so all these things are there also enhancing farmers income it was also important for fair price discovery and better connectivity to the market all right so market reforms are very very necessary in agriculture all right recently recently the government just uh, revoked the uh, farm law ordinance all right there was a lot of debate around it there was a lot of controversy around it all right so this document becomes very very important in that aspect as well right because it msp will obviously directly affect farmers income and remuneration All right, so nutrition security and sustainable li livelihood. Right, so till now we have all been talking about food security. What is food security? That no person should go to sleep hungry. All right, that every person should be able to get basic three times meals a day. All right, but now, now recent studies have shown that there have been a lot of cases of what 
stunting right there have been a lot of cases of wasting especially among children india as a country uh, has managed to reduce the amount of children the number of child, uh, child stunting and child wasting over the years all right it is still targeted to eliminate stunting and wasting completely among children all right and stunting and wasting basically it does not occur because of food and food deficiency all right it is basically nutrition or macro nutrition uh, deficiency all right so there are many initiatives taken by the government of india to ensure nutritional security for example one of uh, the efforts by the government towards nutritional security is fortified rice fortified rice is enriched rice rice enriched with iron minerals and vitamins that can make up for the nutritional security right and also midday meal scheme uh, midday meal scheme mein bhi kafi sare changes kiye gaye hain aise that the meals distributed to children are prepared in such a way that they make up for the nutritional deficiency in whatever way it it is present all right and sustainable food and farm system what is sustainable food sustainable food basically means what uh, agricultural reforms right the uh, reform in the way farmer cultivates its crop all right so basically uh, zero chemical fertilizers right the chemical for use of chemical fertilizers and water guzzling crops like rice and sugar cane they should be replaced with more sustainable food and farm systems for example what growing of millets right crop diversification and using of more and more natural manures so all these efforts are collectively uh, brought together in this particular book which is being published by the springer publication and was released by the union minister of agriculture okay you should actually have an insight into these issues right because it will help you in the long run even in the interview you will be able to you know understand better and learn better this insight will help you retain uh, small facts in a much better way all right so what is the target of ministry of civil aviation in terms of airport construction in india by 2025 All right. So, what is the target of Ministry of Civil Aviation? The target change who are in terms of airport construction. You all know about Udan RCS scheme, right? Ode Desh ka Aam Nagrik and Regional Connectivity Scheme, which was launched in the year two thousand and sixteen under the Ministry of Civil Aviation. All right. Now, in the target, hai, uh, not only targets to improve regional connectivity by affordable flights, right? but it also wants to make airports economically viable to the airline operators okay now the target has been increased to 220 airports by 2025 okay and isme private sector ka bhi investment kafi zyada rahega in both green field green field projects as well as brown field projects okay so green field projects are those projects that start from the scratch right chinme kabhi koi development nahi hua tha there is a bare ground and the investor will start everything from the scratch all right that is green field and brown field projects are usually projects that have been developed but are some or the other reason due to some or the other reason there are underutilized right there are underserved the infrastructure quality is very very poor right they need some or the other sort of revamp these are your brownfield projects all right so government has encouraged investments into both greenfield and brownfield projects right and it has announced in the lok sabha that the government has set a target of increasing the number of airports from 140 to 2025 220 by 2025 all right and also the number of air routes right they have also been increased down the number of passengers who travel by air also according to the ministry should triple by 2023 Okay, presently there are fourteen point five crore air travelers in our country, and the ministry aims to triple this number to approximately forty crores. 
ओके सो हेयर यू हैव थर्टी थ्री न्यू डोमेस्टिक कार्गो टर्मिनल्स फिफ्टीन न्यू फ्लाइट ट्रेनिंग स्कूल्स विद ऑल्सो फोकस ऑन ड्रोन सेक्टर राइट ड्रोन सेक्टर यू ऑल नो आर नाम्ड एविएशन सेक्टर आर नाम्ड एविएशन व्हीकल इज बेसिकली योर एयर ड्रोन्स यू ए वी राइट एंड द गवर्नमेंट हैव रिलीज plethora of rules a lot of rules regarding the use and application of drones in our country uh, there are several zones allocated for each type of uh, drone we will have a detailed look into it maybe sometime later but uh, you should know that the drone sector is being widely being used today in recreational activities in the defense sector as well as in the consumer sector all right so here we have uh, marketing sector okay 15% of the pilots under the scheme would be women the uh, improving the global average to 5% right and two new airlines jet and alaska will also launch their services in india under this program all right now this question is very very interesting right we will learn a lot of things about some structures in india uh, through this question okay so let's just have a look at it which regions geoglyphs have been added to the tentative list of world heritage site of unesco from india okay unesco you all know what is is it it is united nations uh, united nations uh, specialized agency right its aim is to preserve social and cultural heritage okay and world heritage sites are uh, published by unesco annually all right they are published by unesco annually and before finalizing any site into the final list of uh, world heritage site of unesco uh, a, a year before some sites are added to the tentative list right so for example a particular site is added to a tentative list this year next year it will go to the panel to get finalized and get permanently added to the uh, world heritage sites of unesco all right so world heritage sites uh, sites basically include both they include both natural diversities right they include both natural sites and cultural sites sites that are very very important and outstanding in uh, uh, outstanding evidence of human civilization okay so tell me um, how many natural sites are permanently listed in the world heritage site of unesco do let me know about it in the comments below right name at least one natural site uh, one natural world heritage site from india listed in unesco okay so the correct answer to this question here we have konkan geoglyphs from konkan uh, right these are uh, built on uh, these are made on laterite plateaus right लैटराइट प्लेटूस पे ये जियोग्लिफ्स को बनाया गया है सो बेसिकली व्हाट आर जियोग्लिफ्स 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 आर बेसिकली व्हाट जियोग्लिफ्स आर आर्ट ऑन द पीस ऑफ लैंड राइट यू कैन मेक इट आउट फ्रॉम द पिक्चर हियर बिलो दिस इज अ जियोग्लिफ राइट इट इज अ लैंड राइट एंड people from the early historic sites have made an art on it right so this is a geoglyph glyph also known as petroglyph and uh, it is an early historic site right a his prehistoric site uh, found in konkan all right now along with uh, geoglyphs another historic important historic site that have been added to the tentative list has been uh, this temple in andhra pradesh Shri Veer Bhadra Temple, which is a temple dedicated to Lord Shiv, Shri Veer Bhadra Temple uh, from Andhra Pradesh, and a 200 meter monolithic bull Nandi. It is a 200 meter monolithic bull. Mo by monolithic, what do you understand? Monolithic means carved out from a single rock, right? A single rock se carved out kiya monolithic bull ko Nandi. It is situated in Lipakshi, Anantpur district in Andhra Pradesh. All right, and geoglyphs from Konkan, or also known as petroglyphs, have been added to the tentative list. All right, now very very interesting. 
uh, another uh, site that has been added is a uh, living roots bridge living roots bridge is basically an example of people's relation to biodiversity right to the botanical diversity and the socio cultural links between people and nature in the city of Meg in the state of meghalaya right living root bridges are basically such bridges that are made out of trees right people manipulate the root of the trees in that uh, region and then they make bridges out of them right these are very very strong environmentally sustainable uh, way of you know making bridges across a uh, water body all right so these are botanical links among people and nature they have been included in tentative list of world heritage site right and jing king jri is a living root bridge cultural landscape of meghalaya right this is actually this is the name that has been included in the tentative list which airport has won the aviation sustainability and environment award at wings india 2022 all right so aviation sustainability and wings india 2022 we have already discussed about this event in one of our previous classes right wings india 2022 was organized by the ministry of civil aviation at begumpet airport at begumpet airport in hyderabad all right so it was organized between 24th march to 27th march all right so ye which airport has won the uh, aviation sustainability and environment award okay so please answer the question first now so so that we can discuss about it right chhatrapati shivaji cochin international airport begumpet kempegowda international airport or igia all right so what is the correct answer please uh, mark the correct answer The correct answer here is Chhatrapati Shivaji International Airport को Aviation Sustainability and Environment Award में best prize मिला है. Okay, so the Ministry of Civil Aviation and FICI has jointly organized Wings India 2022. All right, and the theme is India at 75 New Horizon for Aviation Industry. Right, in this event there was uh, Indian Air Force Sarang helicopter team. performed a fly pass during wings india 2022 to sarang helicopter team what is it it is sarang is actually a display a display a sarang in a sarang pattern a display is used to the sarang display team was formed in the year 2003 and basically hal dhruv helicopter is flown uh, in a formation in a particular formation which is known as sarang helicopter team all right moving on to the next slide we have hansa ng now hansa ng is developed by csir nal right okay hansa ng is also a very very important very important uh, innovation in uh, in the indian air force all right and another one is saras mk2 saras mk2 in one of our previous lectures we discussed about hindustan 228 right hindustan 228 was based out of dornier 228 uh, civilian aircraft 19 seater civilian aircraft and on the same lines saras mk2 has been a 19 seater light transport civilian aircraft now this has also been developed by national aerospace lab in collaboration with csir actually national aerospace lab ka operating agency is csir all right and airport authority of india and bharat electronic limited has also partnered for developing air traffic management system indigenously okay so these are some uh, awards that have been handed out i hope you can see this you will get the pdf you will get the pdf for this uh, slide for every current affair video that we post daily aapko pdf hamare telegram channel mein mil jayega so please join it all right so covid champion award limited has a mission mission safeguarding all right best airport award has been given to kempe goda international airport in bengaluru all right aviation innovation ka award bhi kempe goda ko hi mila hai and aviation sustainability and environment award you all know we discussed chhatrapati shivaji international airport all right so 
everything else is there right there in the slide have a look at it two three times and you will be able to remember this okay which with which organization has ministry of msme collaborated to organize mega international summit on msmes all right mega international summit on msmes se kaun si ministry ne collaborate karke ek summit organize kiya hai कौन से ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के साथ कोलैबोरेट किया है आंसर द क्वेश्चन इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ स्किल डेवलपमेंट सेंट्रल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ हैंड टूल राइट सी डी ई विच इज द करेक्ट आंसर जल्दी से बताइए द करेक्ट आंसर हेयर इज एंटरप्रिन्योरशिप डेवलपमेंट इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंडिया हैज कोलैबोरेटेड विद द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एम एस एम ई एंड मेगा इंटरनेशनल समिट ऑन एम एस एम ईज इन इंडिया इंटरनेशनल सेंटर न्यू डेली हैव बीन रिसेंटली ऑर्गेनाइज राइट सेंट्रल स्टैटिस्टिक्स ऑफिस जो कि मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ स्टार्ट्स एंड प्रोग्राम इम्प्लीमेंटेशन के अंदर आता है इट हैज कंडक्टेड एन इन डेप्थ रिसर्च स्टडी ऑन द ग्रोथ पैटर्न ऑफ एम एस एम ईज इन इंडिया एम एस एम ईज यू नो दैट इन मोस्ट ऑफ द इकोनॉमीज वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट एम्प्लॉयर इन एनी इकोनॉमी इज एम एस एम ई सेक्टर इवन इन इंडिया और राइट सो इट इज़ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर एम एस एम ईज टू ग्रो टू इट इज गवर्नमेंट इज ऑल्सो लॉन्च प्रोडक्शन लिंक्ड इंसेंटिव स्कीम्स फॉर एम एस एम ई टू एनकरेज एम एस एम ईज टू टेक अप मैन्युफैक्चरिंग राइट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड एम एस एम ईज इज ऑल्सो बींग एनकरेज टू जनरेट एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड हेल्प इन द ग्रोथ ऑफ द इकोनॉमी और राइट द एम एस एम ई सेक्टर इसका जी डी पी में शेयर हैज बट इट हैज रिमेन स्टैगनेंट ओवर द ईयर्स दैट इज फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड इलेवन ट्वेल्व टू एटीन नाइनटीन द शेयर ऑफ एम एस एम ई टू जी डी पी हैज बीन अराउंड थर्टी परसेंट ओनली और राइट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में भी टू थाउजेंड एटीन नाइनटीन एंड नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी में एम का कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन वॉज ऑलमोस्ट द सेम एंड द शेयर ऑफ एम एस एम ईन इंडिया टोटल एक्सपोर्ट्स हैव ऑल्सो बीन द सेम फॉर द पास्ट टू ईयर्स और राइट विथ विच ऑयल कंपनी हैज इंडियन एयरफोर्स पार्टनर फॉर द फ्लीट कार्ड फ्यूल ऑन द मूव राइट सो विद विच ऑयल कंपनी let's have a look answer the question correctly is it ioc bpcl ongc hpcl or oil the correct answer here is iocl has all uh, there is a tie up between iocl and iaf for fleet card on the fuel move so basically what is fleet card on the fuel move at present uh, all the vehicles that carry uh, important essentials for the indian air force right for the indian air force stationed at various places for example a vehicle is carrying uh, some load from pokhran right and it has to go to some place say anantnag right it's a long distance okay but it is also important for the vehicle to reach that location very very quickly especially in an emergency or a war like scenario right so is case mein presently kya hota hai that that vehicle can access or uh, refuel itself right only in stations that are based out of the indian air force right but uh, through this agreement iocl ke jitne bhi out stations honge on the way the vehicle can uh, get uh, get itself re refueled at any petroleum station of iocl all right free of cost and on a priority basis so that it can improve the speed right it can reach its destination quickly right they can refuel themselves at india oils any outlet it will enhance the speed of the operations of iaf right so how much stake does hdfc bank own in india debt resolution company राइट इंडिया डेट रेजोल्यूशन कंपनी में एच डी एफ सी बैंक का कितना स्टेक है लेट्स फाइंड आउट अभी आई सी आई सी आई बैंक ने फिफ्टीन परसेंट स्टेट स्टेक एक्वायर किया था इन आई डी आर सी एल राइट सो एच डी एफ सी बैंक हैज ऑल्सो एक्वायर्ड फिफ्टीन परसेंट स्टेक इन आई डी आर सी एल इंडिया डेट रेजोल्यूशन कंपनी इज बेसिकली डेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनी और राइट and now uh, various banks are infusing capital in this company 
और राइट right, इसी तरह एक एन ए आर सी एल गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया बैक एक एसेट रिकंस्ट्रक्शन कंपनी है दैट इज आल्सो डेट मैनेजमेंट कंपनी इन इन इट्स ओन वे बट ये बैड बैंक्स से डील करता है ओके बैड बैंक्स मींस बैंक्स हुज लोन्स हैव टर्न बैड और डिफॉल्टिंग बियॉन्ड अ मिनिमम थ्रेश सो एन ए आर सी एल विल बेसिकली बाय द बैड लोन्स फ्रॉम दीज बैड बैंक्स एंड try to turn them into valuable assets right so this narcl will also register incorporate itself under companies act but with it will register itself under a uh, uh, asset reconstruction company under the rbi all right same thing goes for idrcl okay now moving on to the next question which bank has partnered with ease my trip for launching ease my trip green debit card राइट सो इज माई ट्रिप ग्रीन डेबिट कार्ड कौन से बैंक ने लॉन्च uh, किया है द करेक्ट आंसर एच एस बी सी डी बी एस सिटी बैंक द करेक्ट आंसर हेयर इज डी बी एस बैंक राइट विच इज द डेवलपमेंट बैंक ऑफ सिंगापुर राइट डेवलपमेंट बैंक ऑफ सिंगापुर इंडिया ब्रांच हैज पार्टनर्ड विद इज माई ट्रिप टू लॉन्च एनवायरमेंटल फ्रेंडली डेबिट कार्ड right it is a green debit card which is made of 99% recycled polyvinyl chloride all right so polyvinyl chloride ek plastic material hota hai which is harder than plastic it is uh, largely used in indoor construction activities right it is not totally environmentally friendly but recycling polyvinyl chloride and you know converting them into debit cards is definitely a sure shot way to reduce plastic waste uh, production in the world all right so this is a very important initiative towards that towards recycling of plastic waste basically uh, the it is known as green waste because it recycles your plastic waste all right so it can it to encourage green debit cards it has exclusive travel related offers right it will encourage customers to adopt eco friendly practices what is the size of india indian space economy as per the space economy of india its size and structure on the paper please uh, answer the question correctly first is it 0.01% 0.23% 0.9879 or 19 what is the size of india's space economy right so the correct answer here is e that is 0.19% let's have a look at what space economy really is researchers from center for development studies and iist center for development studies basically a higher education or a research institute hai economics ka right and iist is a space science technology institute this institute is actually under isro all right so it has conducted a study titled space economy of india its size and structure right so accordingly the space industry in india is worth rupees 33 36000 crore all right as on 2020 21 right according to the study according to the study india India's space economy its share is lesser than US and China but but it is more than that of Germany Germany China Italy and Japan so this is very very important note it down in which sectors in which sectors does the indian space economy is more booming space applications right space operations and manufacturing you all know you all study and follow current affairs on a daily basis you all know that isro keeps coming up with some innovation or the other all right in many many sectors right for example first is your cube sat right isro has also uh, accomplished many accolades uh when it comes to launching of satellites right we chandrayaan mission uh, we first tried to uh, land chandrayaan mission on the far side of the moon all right so that is also very important okay cube site satellites are very small size satellites isro is also con contributing towards reducing space debris all right space applications may isro has also launched an indian gps indian gps system 
write it down in the comments below what is the indian gps system that has been launched by the isro all right so these are all some sectors in which space economy has been really booming okay recently the first indian woman to win a medal at olympics has been conferred the bbc lifetime achievement award in 2022 okay so 2022 will mark the 100th year or the centenary year for bbc and bbc lifetime achievement award has recently been conferred to a first indian woman named karnam malleswari the question is asking you in which sport has she received the uh, olympic uh, has she received the medal right so the sport that she has received the medal in is weightlifting okay indian weightlifter uh, let's first karnam malheswari is the first indian woman to win a medal at olympics right P V Sindhu was the first Indian woman to win a silver medal at Olympics. Okay, so another important uh, weightlifters. Let's just have the uh, look at other sports players who have been awarded this year. All right, Saikho Mirabai Chanu has been announced as winner of the third edition of BBC Indian Sportsman Woman of the Year Award. Right, twenty twenty one with Tokyo Olympics, me Mirabai Chanu created history by becoming the first Indian weightlifter to clinch a silver medal at Tokyo Olympics. Right, BBC is emerging player Shefali Verma. She is the youngest female cricketer who played in for India in women's T twenty international match two thousand and nineteen. All right. so this was all for today thank you so much for watching our daily current affairs videos in case you have any doubts post it down in the comments below thank you so much for watching have a good day keep preparing and see you tomorrow same time okay thank you bye bye